you know, I just would love to be able to sit down and talk about Joker and how much I love that movie and all the theories I have about it. And I really want to go see the movie again so I can see how well my theories hold together and maybe find a couple more clues. But unfortunately, the media circus is still fucking running about this movie, unfortunately. So what's the latest Joker non traversy that the media is running around with? Well, for those of you who have seen the movie, you know that there is a scene towards the end where Arthur Fleck puts on the Joker makeup and he's jumping and, dan and dancing down the stairs and the song Rock and Roll Part 2 by Gary Glitter is playing in the background. And so when the media connected the dots and realized, oh shit, wait a minute, uh, they started screeching about how Joker could potentially result in a payday for a convicted pedophile. Now, for those of you who don't know, Rock and Roll Part 2 was partly made by a man by the name of Gary Glitter. I can't remember his real name. I think it was... Um, uh, Paul Gad, Paul Gad, that's what his real name was. But either way, Gary Glitter slash Paul Gad is basically a sentient piece of shit. He uh, owned child pornography. He was a pedophile. He was a rapist. He was uh, convicted of having sex with a girl under the age of 13 years old. And I'm going to say it very, very, very clearly. I am in no way ever going to defend this piece of shit. So if you want to go ahead and pretend to be an idiot and try and misconstrue this video as uh, me defending Gary Glitter and Paul Gad, you could go ahead and shut the fuck up right now. But either way, everybody's all pissed off because of the possibility that Gary Glitter maybe potentially could sort of make money money off Joker. Here's the thing, and this is why I'm not immediately jumping to condemn Joker and the director and Warner Brothers and all that over this whole thing. Now, we know basically nothing about the contracts that were signed between uh, the crew behind Joker and the studios and the whoever it is right now who is currently representing Gary Glitter and has the rights to his songs. We don't even know if Gary Glitter actually has full rights to his songs and things like that or what his real financial situations are like. We only have a glimpse into all this. So we don't know if he's even going to be seeing a dime from Joker. We just got a report and everybody's running around and copying and pasting the same thing that we have seen. Uh, and we have no real proof. That's the thing. We have no real proof. I have seen a shitload of conflicting information coming out about this. Gary Glitter could stand to make zero pounds off of this entire thing. He could stand to make as little as 500 pounds off of Joker using the song Rock and Roll Part 2, or he could stand to make as much as uh, 250,000 pounds or 500,000 pounds. And wherever I look, I seem to be getting different answers for how much money he could potentially be making. Now, obviously, part of that is, you know, people are trying to base it off of uh, how much money Joker is actually making. But the other fact of the matter is, People don't know what percentage he could be getting and they don't know what the contract is. And there have been tons of other movies that have used Gary Glitter's song in, uh, songs in there after his conviction and everything. The MLB, the NB NBA, the NFL, they've all used his songs after the conviction, but eventually have slowly stopped uh, using Gary Glitter's music. Now, the thing about this that uh, I, you know, I started looking into this story because I honestly did not care about this at all. And I'll explain my reasoning here in a little bit. But as I started looking into this, I found the reason real fucking story. So Gary Glitter is being held in a cushy prison that is solely used for sex offenders. And this news comes to us from uh, the sun.co.uk. I will remember to put a link to that in the description. They actually did a fairly good job trying to get some of the facts here. So I do believe that they are uh, warranted to click and not just getting relegated to being an archive. Uh, but either way, the sun reports that Gary Glitter was moved to this prison and everything uh, called. Uh, what is it here? It is what's referred to as a Category C jail solely to house perverts. The prisoners reportedly each have a 20-inch flat-screen TV and tea-making facilities in their own cells and are allowed to walk around freely 24 hours a day in the wing of their prison. A source previously told The Sun it's like a holiday camp in there. To think that some of these, peoples ha uh, that some of these people have raped children, the public would be disgusted to see how they live. I mean, th th they're basically living in a hotel. 
They have committed all these crimes and everything, and they are living in a hotel. That's the real fucking story here. But it gets even more messed up. So this prison has recently undergone a 3.3 mil, uh, million pound renovation and actually looks uh, a lot better than a prison should ever look. I'll try and get more pictures and put them up on screen here, but whew, uh, but it's even worse from there. It's even worse from there because this Joker thing is nowhere near the real story here. So. I, for shits and giggles, I decided to see, you know, because I'm hearing that Gary Glitter is in debt. So I went to go check his net worth and his net worth was anywhere between one and seven million pounds. And while it is, you know, believed by a lot of people that Gary Glitter is actually blacklisted on every radio station in the UK, that's not the case. And he's bringing in uh, a, around 250,000 pounds per year just from his songs being on the radio. Now, this article from The Sun also points out that in 2013, Gary Glitter stood to earn one million pounds in royalties uh, from one of his songs being used and sample tracks and things like that, and uh, also made 300,000 pounds for his mu uh, music being used in the movie Silver Linings Playbook. Where is all the outrage when that happened? This was after some of his first convictions before he uh, Gary Glitter was jailed in, I believe it was 2015. But even on top of that... Gary Glitter is given enough, you know, uh, reach with to the public and everything where he actually owns a flat in London that he is able to rent out to other people and get money off of that. So <laughs> who cares if he gets a little bit of extra money from Joker and, you know, people want to use that to demonize Joker. I mean, this guy's not exactly hurting for money. He's still fairly wealthy. All he's getting is a little extra drop in the bucket. I don't see him. Get, I mean, if anything, it's messed up that the guy's making all of this other money on the side and is basically completely and absolutely unhindered by the crimes that he has committed and is basically living in a posh as shit fucking, you know, hotel that is this uh, sorry prison disguised as a hotel. I mean, that's the real story here, in my opinion. I... The only reason I think people are making a big deal over the fact that, you know, Gary Glitter could maybe be making money off of uh, Joker is because, as we've seen, people are so, so, so ready to throw this movie under the bus, and they are desperately trying to find something uh, to demonize this movie with. I mean, we've been seeing all kinds of stupid articles about, oh, people are, you know, just being normal people in, you know, the movie theater while seeing Joker, and they're trying to, you know, misconstrue a guy smoking or somebody cursing as, look, this proof, it's the incel uprising coming, Joker's gonna destroy society, I mean, Meanwhile, these people are simultaneously praising the shit out of Birds of Prey because boy clown bad, girl clown good. But either way, as to why I ultimately really do not care about this song and I do not see, uh, you know, Joker being in the wrong for using this track. Honestly, I, I'm going to go straight up and say I thought there are better picks uh, for that scene. There's better songs they could have used. I would have liked to have seen them use uh, maybe an inversion of the theme that plays when Joker is dancing uh, in the bathroom. When, when he's dancing by himself, you hear this very haunting uh, cello uh, playing in the bathroom. Background and I'm like, you know, something that was like an upbeat version of that would kind of really bring the soundtrack and not just the story kind of full circle. And it kind of, you know, to quote George Lucas, it kind of would have rhymed a little bit. I think that would have been a much better pick or even use the song that was in the trailers for when Joker was going down uh, those stairs. A, a friend of mine suggested using uh, a particular song by David Bowie. I can't remember which song it was off the top of my head right now. But I, you know, when I was sitting there watching that movie, you know, and that song came on, I didn't even think, oh, hey, that guy who wrote that song is a sentient piece of garbage and this movie is therefore bad for it. I'm just like, OK, that's a weird song to pick there. But, you know, the other hand is this movie is supposed to make you feel 
weird. It's supposed to make you feel off. It's supposed to, you're not supposed to feel good after you watch this movie, other than the fact that, you know, this movie is, you know, marveling at what this movie has accomplished because it is a genuine work of art, in my opinion. Uh, and it's also good enough that even normies and people who aren't, you know, film scholars and uh, going there to see a piece of art can be entertained and just watch a good fucking movie. So, yeah, I honestly do not care that they use that scene. If, and again, if, because we don't have a solid answer, there's a lot of assumptions. People are, you know, uh, you know, just jumping the gun on conclusions with this one. I don't care that they use that song. Would I rather Gary Glitter not get money? Yes, I definitely would. But I'm a whole hell of a lot more concerned by the fact that his music is still playing on radios. It's still playing at events. It's still, you know, raking in all of this money that he's still got enough. You know, I guess the word would be autonomy that he's allowed to go ahead and run a business on the fucking side to make even more money. And at the end of the day, that's the real the real messed up thing here. I did not know Gary Glitter uh, was basically just living in a double tree when he's supposed to be in prison. That's, that is all kinds of messed up. So yeah, I, I really don't care. You know, the whole point is separate the art from the artist. If you still like Gary Glitter's music, go the hell ahead and still listen to it. I, you know, I, like I was talking to somebody the other day, it's like, you know, I'm not all of a sudden going to stop watching Clerks because the movie was produced and funded by Harvey Weinstein. I'm not going to stop watching, um, you know, Aquaman because Amber Heard is a, you know, <laughs> you want to see some craziness. Go, Why don't you go ahead and look up what Amber Heard did to Johnny Depp? I'm not going to stop watching Aquaman because of Amber Heard. Uh, separate the art from the artist. OK, just enjoy a movie. You don't have to think about th this kind of this kind of nonsense. I mean, I I don't think it reflects on the movie at all. They had a particular song in mind. They ran with that song and that's it. That's all I think was happening in the minds of the filmmakers when they were making this movie. Now, if they decide to go ahead and, you know, when the DVD comes out to take that song out of the movie and put in another song, I can completely understand, understand that if they did now, if now do I think they are going to, they have not ca the Todd Phillips and the crew behind Joker have yet to cave to any of, you know, people's demands that this movie not be shown that, you know, uh, they make the movie more acceptable for people. They have yet to cave to a single one of those demands. So I do not think, uh, they will change this movie in any subsequent releases or anything like that. So, yeah. You know, and at the end of the day, if they want to go right ahead, go right ahead, because I understand that this can piss off a lot of people and it is a pretty, uh, dark subject matter and things like that. So yeah, sure. Fine. Uh, ultimately I think this is just another piece of fake news that's getting spread around as a reason to demonize, uh, the Joker movie, because again, we have absolutely no way of knowing for sure whether or not Gary Glitter will be seeing a dime from Joker or whether or not all of the money will be going straight to his debtors or things like that. And yeah, I think that's what this is. It's just a, you know, uh, they caught the whiff of a story. The media ran with it to try and demonize this movie. They did not have all the facts and they tried to throw Joaquin Phoenix and Todd Phillips and all of them under the bus. And they, tr because there was no real big, you know, outrage at Joker, you know, all these places were saying, oh, this movie is going to inspire people uh, into violence. It's going to cause, you know, incel uprising and the gamers will rise up because of Joker. And then nothing happened. Absolutely nothing happened. And we'll talk more about that later. Um, you know, I think that they wanted to find something and this is what they did they ended up taking all the people with this who enjoy joker and in a way in a way said you are because you saw this movie giving money to a convicted pedophile that's what i think it is it's a smear campaign not just on the movie but on everybody who saw the movie and enjoyed it so shame on the media shame on the media they they are losing their minds with this one right now. But either way, let me know what you think about this. Do you think Todd Phillips uh, is in the wrong for using that song in Joker? Or were you like me, where you were just in the theater, you heard the song and you were just like, oh, okay, that's a song. They're using a song in a movie. 
I mean, do you think there's a better song to use that be like, that's what I really want to know. Do you think there would have been a better song to use there? Something what would have been uh, would have better conveyed that scene than rock and roll part two? I think that could be the more uh, entertaining conversation to have here. So well, let me know your thoughts about all that uh, down in the comment section. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. A huge thanks to all the people who support the channel on Patreon and subscribe star. You guys help keep things going here. And until next time, everyone, please remember to take it easy. Have fun and like Joker, let's make entertainment great again.